Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of DeFi Weekly where we talk about Bancor V2. So Bancor is a bit of an interesting one um, in the fact that uh, they actually had one of the very first working AMM implementations um, on Ethereum before Uniswap even. Uh, but because they did a large ICO and a few other factors, um, they have kind of been a bit, I'd say, unpopular in the community. Uh, and for that reason, their new V2 design has been really looked over. Um, so I've, I've kind of looked through it, and to be honest, it's actually really cool. So I thought, let me make a video so I can share with all of you about uh, what I like about it and why, since I have been receiving questions about it. So that being said, um, the overview will basically be that we look at how the new V2 works, how the token comes into play with this, and I guess what are the risks with V2, or uh, I'd say Bancor is maybe even an investment. So how V2 works. Now, the unique thing which uh, Bancor relies on is actually an oracle to determine the weights. So in case you don't know what that means, in a traditional like Uniswap AMM, you have a set weight of the pool. So you might have, say, um, that's my little thing, a 50 50 pool between ETH and DAI. This means that the total value of Ethereum and the total value of DAI inside the pool should always be equal. And if these get out of whack, so if the price of Ethereum goes to say $700, a certain portion of the ETH is taken by an ARB, and they will make sure there's less ETH in the pool, which should bring the value back, back down to $500, um, or it will reduce the amount of ETH to make sure it matches with the amount of DAI, so the DAI amount will increase it, all right? And this amount that's siphoned off uh, is kind of what's known as one aspect of impermanent loss, right? Because the price of Ethereum has gone up, you've actually sold for dollars and at uh, a lower, um, an earlier stage. So you're actually losing money compared to if you just held Ethereum. If you want to learn more about impermanent loss, I'd highly recommend that you check out the video that I put out earlier on. Um, but anyway, that's kind of like how a traditional AMM works. You might have uh, like an 80 20 pool imbalancer or anything else but the concept is the same you have a set weight so the core core innovation of bancor v2 is that the weight which we see over here so whoops uh the weight between say uh eighth and we'll take uh bancor for this example this weight is determined by the price via an actual oracle itself. So if the price of Ethereum is $1,000 and the price, uh, if, sorry, let me come again. If the price of Ethereum is $400 and the price of Bancor is $2, it will actually uh, adjust the weights based on the price. So there will be uh, a lot, so in this case it would be uh, 20, whoops, uh, there'd be 20 times the amount of BNT to every ETH in the pool, but their dollar amounts would still stay uh, the same, for example, as in you'd always make sure you have an equal amount of dollar values, but the quantity of the tokens will be determined by the oracle. And that's a subtle difference, but it's really worth kind of grasping, right? Because in this, uh, it's always going to siphon off some ETH into the market or die into the market to make sure it maintains a 50-50 ratio. But in Bancor's case, it will simply adjust the weight via the price itself. This 120 isn't the weight of the pool, by the way. Uh, it, not weight. It's more so just to show the ratio of the amount of tokens and the weight can change dynamically based on the price. Now, uh, what kind of happens, and maybe I know this still might be like a little confusing and you're probably still like, wait, but I don't fully get this. That's okay because I'm gonna make this more clear. So 
in the case where you have uh, your ETH coin here, and let's say uh, your DAI coin, right? And the price of ETH is currently, say, $100, and this is a dollar, right? And let's say you've got one ETH in the pool, and you've got 100 DAI, which makes sure that the values are equal, okay? Now, what actually happens uh, when the price of Ethereum, say, skyrockets to $150, which was ages ago, but anyway. So when this price of ETH skyrockets to 150 you would now have a situation where you've got $150 worth of value and you have $100 worth of die. And rather than being 50-50, this is now, hold on, let me just do some quick maths. Uh, 15 divided by 25 times four is 60. Okay, so this would be 60% and this would be 40% of the pool. All right, let me just describe here new state, All right? So rather than arbitrage is forcing this to become 50-50 by, by buying ETH and selling it for DAI in the pool at a cheaper price, uh, what actually happens is that the Oracle will keep it in this ratio, right? It will say, hey, you know what? It's okay. I know the real price of Ethereum. I don't need to rely on an arbitrage to keep it in check. So I'm going to keep this ratio as it is. So then you're kind of thinking, but how do we restore the ratio? And this is where like, I think the design is kind of clever. And although the ratio is uneven, all the fees generated for this pool are split evenly. Meaning if you're supplying more Ethereum than die in the pool, you actually have an incentive to move or sell some of your Ethereum yourself as a liquidity provider and put it into the die side because the same amount of fees are being distributed and you can earn more fees if you supply more die. So rather than relying on uh, say ARBs and having impermanent loss, you actually just rely on incentives to make sure the pools will be balanced. All right, and this is kind of like the heart of what makes like Bancor V2 unique compared to anything else out on the market right now. So I guess you're kind of thinking, well, how does the token come in? And this is where I think uh, it's a really interesting um, bet to make in the short to medium term. So in all of these examples above, I've used like ETH or DAI or something else. Now let's actually suppose that, or no, let's not suppose, <laughs> The point of the new bank or V system is that everything is paired with Bancor, the BNT token. And you might kind of be thinking, but ah, uh, it's another token that I have to use. Do I even care about Bancor? Like that's kind of annoying. And you're right, <laughs> because what the system actually allows you to do is only provide a single token rather than both tokens, right? So if we, let's go to our new pool over here, all right? And it's a, let's say a BNT ETH pool. Now in this pool, in a traditional like uh, AMM with say ETH and DAI, you have to, the liquidity provider has to provide both of these, right? But in Bancor's uh, new design, you only have to provide a single side of the thing. So anyone can come along and just deposit their BNT tokens, and someone else can come in and just deposit ETH. And the because of the way the Oracle works, if you deposit 100 ETH, you will always get 100 ETH back. If you deposit BNT, you'll always get the same amount of uh, BNT back. And uh, then you're kind of thinking, but how does this kind of even up? And that's kind of like going back to the above thing. So if let's say this pool is 90% BNT and 10% ETH, 
the fees aren't going to be distributed evenly. Any ETH that you supply here is going to end up earning much higher fees uh, based on the definition. So what that will in turn force people to do is add ETH over here because there's literal free money to make in fees. And because you're not worried about receiving less ETH at the end of it, it's kind of like, why not? And the counterparty to that is that you have a bunch of Bancor bulls who are just going to always be staking BNT <laughs> wherever they can. So what you have uh, as an effect of this is many kind of pools. So if we imagine BNT ETH, and then we have uh, BNT die, and then uh, we have BNT USDC. What eventually happens is, is that BNT becomes kind of the base pair that holds everything together. And what happens is that as the price of BNT, the token itself, increases, these pools actually become uh, out of weight in the fact that the fees will now be, there will be more fees available on this side which should in turn increase more ETH to be actually staked in the pool, which therefore increases total liquidity available, right? And this is really similar to the synthetics design where a core piece uh, of your product uses your token itself. And as the token price increases, so does the assets under management, right? So it's just really, really nice um, spiral upwards which ultimately happens and i think that's the really cool thing about the whole bancor v2 model in the fact that you have this reflexivity where as the bnt price goes up so does the liquidity so does the fees and you just have a lot of really good stuff happening so hopefully i guess like that explains the system design um in terms of i'd say what are the risks right so based on early recounts I've had with people, the gas required is still a bit high. So you need it takes about three hundred thousand gas per trade. But honestly, if, like if you're playing with DeFi, you shouldn't be doing it. It shouldn't be playing around with anything less than thousand dollars. <laughs> um, and then I guess the other thing is that whether this works in practice is still to be seen and. Uh, whether there are any front-running issues or anything of that nature still to be found out is still, uh, I'd say, up for debate, right? So there's still, like, risks, don't get me wrong. But given the kind of uniqueness of the model, given the fact that it's live and working, and given the fact the team's been working on this for a while, um, my kind of bet is that a lot of these things will be worked out. And the design is something that's fundamentally unique and uh, given a bull market like this, uh, it's you find very few projects which are doing something new and unique and also teams which are credible enough to actually execute on it via the code itself. Um, so yeah, hopefully that gives you guys a good overview of Bancor V2. And yeah, look forward to hearing what you have to think about this and I guess what videos you want to see next. Peace out. Bye.